All right, YouTube, what is going on? My name is Bigfoot. Thank you very much for checking out the final episode of this series of Another Brick in the Mall. So, it's been a really, really good series, and we're going to do a recap towards the end of the video, but we've actually still got some quite important stuff still to do, which needs our attention first of all. So, I'm going to start off with saying that I, ha I have done a few things in between this and the last episode. Don't know why I stuttered quite badly there. Again, I've got a really bad throat right now, actually. It might sound a bit grainy, and I also keep getting hiccups randomly, so I'm going to have to go to the doctors about that. But anyway, that's by the by. So, we've gone ahead and we've extended Electronic City, which is good. So, as we can see here, we've just got some extra items on here, a bit more direct access to the actual storage room as well. What we are going to do is we're going to split Billy's into two, Basically, this is a butcher and a fishmonger right now. I'm just going to split that in two, and that's why I've left this bit of area here. So we can go ahead and make sure we've got ample room to do that. If I first of all go ahead and jump into a snow demand, we'll get to a sign in a second. Fresh meat food-wise, fresh meat really wants to be tier three, and then fresh fish also does. Fresh meat is, but... We're not quite meeting it. And then fresh fish, because it's under the 50% and fresh meat is above, fresh meat is missing out. So that's what we need to go ahead and do. Coming to think of it now, we can add in so many more shops. We can add in a green grocer, so I'm just going to do that. There was plans for lots of different things, but a lot of them just never materialized, unfortunately. Again, if you'd like to see more of this series, then I might land up bringing it back in, I don't know, building a secondary mall up here, for example, because I could go ahead and keep working towards meeting demands, but at the same time, I do need to draw a line under it at some point, and I feel a good time to do that is now. Though if you disagree with me, please go ahead and say down in the comments section below, I will not be deeply offended. Okay, so let's first of all go ahead and start to get ready for this partition. What we're going to do is we're going to have the one store up here, uh, and then basically there's going to be a wall right down the middle here, and this will be another store. So we're just going to need to go ahead and get ready for that change. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Dum dum dum. I'm actually going to cheat the system here, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these fridges that do not have meat in them. So that's the fish out of the building right now. Then what I want to do is build in this wall here, like so. Then what I'm going to do is think quite hard and I'm gonna decide that we're gonna need self-checkout one in there and then one in yeah let's do that let's go for that then what we're gonna do is add in some more fridges here so not as many this time though one two three one two three and let's fill all these up with meat now with regards to access to the storage room. I've not thought this through, but I'm not going to bend it or anything like that. People can just cut through other shops. That's fine. Because these are still going to be both belly shops. They're just two shops now. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So let me go ahead and... Yeah, that'll work. That'll work quite well. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's add in some more... Yeah, fresh pizzas. We've only got like two fresh pizzas, for example, which I think is crazy. So again, we could have done a frozen shop like Iceland's or... Oh no, that's fish. I mean, pizza's at four. Vegetables are only at three, so it's not great all round. But uh, fresh fish. No, 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 no. Other way around. Fresh meat. That's what we're going for here. So fresh meat all rounds, please. Let's go ahead and get this sorted out. So we're going to have plenty, and I mean plenty of meat now, which is great to see. And we've also got quite... It's a relatively open plan store, so I'm quite happy with it indeed. Coming next door then, we need to go ahead and de-zone this. We need to go ahead and zone this up. Again, it's quite a weird shape to be honest, but it is what it is. So let me now go ahead and let's manage. Let's go ahead and remove this wall here. And let's remove at least that checkout there. Then what we're going to do, we've got two of these in right now. I'm actually going to remove that door as well for the time being, just because I think it's a bit silly. And to be honest, what we're going to do is we're going to make quite some change here, actually. I'm going to go ahead and remove that and that. going to remove these two temporarily as well. We're just going to start this shop from scratch. So let me go ahead and 
build the wall right round into here. I'm going to extend the bathroom by one, I think, or two, actually. Reason for that I will explain in a second, because I do get a lot of toilet complaints, for example, here. Uh, missed sales opportunities in the restroom. Customers are leaving the center because there's no restrooms or they're full. So, again, just adding a slightly smaller amount of capacity makes a difference. I don't know how people are not going to the toilets, because every restroom I look in, they are pretty empty. I'm guessing I've just not got enough frequency of them. I guess that's probably why the complaints are coming in. So, uh, that's something to note. Also, there's no door here. Oh, there is. It's just open all the time. Anyway, do excuse. So, let's go ahead. I'm going to replace these doors as well. And now let me also go ahead into store assignment here as well. So let me unassign that and unassign that. Let's go ahead and jump into storage and let's go ahead and sort this corner out. Let's jump into flooring and let's sort out flooring here quickly as well. So let me go ahead and yeah, pretty much redo all this floor there, which is fine. And then let's sort out this corner here and perfect. Okay. Wonderful. So while we're at it, let's go ahead and take that down, remove that door, remove a gap there. Let's patch in that gap. Let's fill in that there to there, which is perfect. Let's grab a door. And now let's go ahead and grab some more toilets. So again, just a very, very quick change here. Toilet cubicle. Let's get one, two more of these in. An extra sink, or two sinks for that matter. And perfect, well, uh, and let's finish that off by just assigning the greater restroom. So there we go, that works out nicely, and there we go. So small extension, but hopefully makes a difference. Again, as well, stores having a bit of an issue here, but there we go. Okay, so let me now go ahead and, first of all, wall all of this up here. Now, let's start off by actually getting around to building the shop. So let's start off with our self-checkouts. Again, I think I would like them to still be in this corner, so let's go ahead and get the two in there. Now, that's affected the double door placement, hence why I moved my double doors. So let's just do one there and one there right now, which works out fine. With regards to the actual checkouts themselves, I think we're going to have checkouts up the back here. So let's do one, two like that, and then the rest is going to be pretty much just fridges, which is excellent. So one, two, three... Uh, let's build pretty much up to there. They'll remove that one and that one because those are special occurrences. And then let's go ahead and, yeah, pretty much add to the back there. So that's the layout of the shop, which is great. So let me go ahead and now jump in and we're going for fresh fish this time. I'm actually quite surprised that I am actually remembered to do this because Billy's comment was so long ago that uh, it started to go to the back of my mind, but then I was looking at the demand, and the food demand was in the most for fish and meat, so it really does make sense that I'm doing this. Plus, it also goes ahead and makes use of this space a bit better, because there was a possibility it was going to lie redundant, just the way things were laid out, so that's quite important to note. But there we go, so that's that change made, which is exciting. So, now we just need to go ahead and sort it out here. First of all, we're going to rename Billy's current shop to just Billy's Butcher. Get rid of that extension there. And then we're going to go ahead and rename this new shop. Uh, the, yeah, there we go. Billy's Fish Mongers. Perfect. Right, okay, so that's that resolved. This place is going to go to 24-7 as well. Let's get some stock clerks in and let's get this stock out onto the floor. Let's get the stock stock. If that... It does make a bit of sense-ish. Right, anyway, moving on swiftly. Uh, so we'll have at least one stock clerk in at all times, which is good. We are going to have to get some more doors in here. We're actually going to re-add in, I think, that door there. So, lol. What a hoot I am. And that should do the trick right now. So, with that done, we can actually start to get stock into this place. So, I'm wanting the stock clerks to appear. It would be really useful if they did. We might need to add an extra stock clerks into... Wow, what happened here? Or not what happened, but all of a sudden there's so much demand. It's crazy. We can quite easily go ahead and remove some of this meat so we can go ahead and get some more of these tills in. That's not a problem. Actually, I might just do that anyway. 
If we do that there, we get a third one in there, which is fine. So I think that'll make a difference, especially when the workers go home. And like when Christmas comes up, the food sales are crazy. So it's a good thing to point out. Right, for some reason we're not starting stock here, but I think it's because I've not actually assigned the storage room of that there. So at least we can start to get some stock in there. Let's get some cashiers into here. Right now I think we'll just do five cashiers. That works. So if we do one from midnight to ATM, then we do two from ATM through to four in the afternoon, and then we do two on the closing shift. That might be too many in the evening closing shift from 4 till midnight. But again, we'll just play off the demand. So that works. And as we can see, there's a bit of movement going on, which is good. We might need to add an extra checkout, but I am ready for that when required. Final thing I need to do is sort out the small flooring issues, which we've got here, 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 and here. And that's that done, which is great, ladies and gentlemen. So that's Billy's sorted, and that's this area tidied up a little bit. Okay, so the final build we're going to do in this whole series is going to be a pharmacy, a sort of place where we can get a lot more cosmetics in and that sort of thing, because we're really lacking on a lot of that stuff, to be honest. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm actually going to go ahead and go back and replace some of the shelves here with different items because of the reason that we're about to... All these items here are cosmetics, and we're about to build a cosmetic shop, so... Kind of makes sense if I go ahead and, I guess, populate it with some other stuff, in all honesty. Because we've already got some in this shop anyway, so it's fine. Let me go ahead and just see what items are not out enough. So let's get some toys in here, because toys always sell well at Christmas. Come on. There we go. Then what else do we need? Tools were fine. All that stuff's going to get built. Household items. I mean... I don't think those are going to sell that high, to be honest, so we'll leave it. Greetings cards is probably something we need a lot more of, to be honest. So let's get some more greetings cards in here. That brings that up to six, which is super useful. Then on top of that, anything else? Not overly, to be honest. Uh, more tools, more razors. We can have some more soap and shampoo in here, actually. Let's have some more of that in here which is fine. Right, okay, so at least every single item is at three, which is good. So we jump down to here now. This is where our place is going to be. So first of all, let's go ahead and let's pre-floor this place, something which I am rarely that organized to do, but let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and add in doors at various locations. Here, 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 and over here which is great. So then we can go ahead and start to get some shelves in because that is what we are going to need. So let's go ahead and get some... I'm just going to maximize the space, to be honest. This is mainly going to be a checkout sort of shop, I think, though. They'll tell you what. Let's leave a gap there so we can get some access to the stock room a bit easier, which is fine. And then let's go ahead and just have a few aisles where we have our cosmetics. Honestly, I think this amount of shelving should be enough. I really do. And then the rest is just going to be checkouts, which is going to be easy to implement. So, people checkouts are going to go over this far side here. Or should they go... No, I'll tell you what, let's get some self-checkouts in first. So, let's do one, two, three. And let's do four, five, six, like that. And then self-checkouts, or manual checkout, should I say, we'll get two of them in here. So, I can get another one in if required, but I think that should do the trick. So, if we now jump into store, let's actually create this store. Like so, which is perfect. Let's go ahead and, before I do anything else and forget, add in that door there. Let's go ahead and jump into manage. This is going to be called... Um, super something. I think it should be like a super drug. I'm thinking along the lines of that name right now. So, what about, um, I know what we can actually do. Call it Beauty. We'll call it Beauty Palace. Something totally different. I was thinking Beauty Queen, but I didn't want to be, because, for example, males will come to this cosmetic store as well. So, 
Yeah, that works. That works perfect. Right, okay. So while I'm at it, it's already annoying me and it's just sitting in my brain over the doors. I need to sort out the door flooring. It's just frustrating me already, which is crazy. So we've done that, which is good. Now we can go ahead and actually add more people to the store. So Beauty Palace, you need a storage of that area there. Now we're going to do the tedious task of getting items out onto the shelves, or at least choosing what items are going to go out onto the shelves here. So, pads and tampons, let's get that done first. We should have at least three of each, I think, in this shop, which will be perfect. So health and beauty, this is not going to be fun. It's weird though, because it's the last time we're going to be doing it in this whole series, which is crazy. The amount of this I've done, the amount of individual shelves, food shelves, all of that sort of stuff we have is pretty crazy. So it's going to be weird not doing this again. I mean, again, the menu system in this game, it could be really improved from the usability point of view. It's not great, but we also have all still got used to it being this way since the start. So I can relate. I remember when Sim Airport didn't have a search bar and it was really frustrating. And now it does have a search bar. It's absolutely great. Uh, and this game could really benefit from one and also not scrabbly menus like this because, again, it just makes it really a lot longer for me to go ahead and put items out onto the shelves in all honesty. I mean, look at this. It's just not good. But again, I think they've got other other things. I mean, they do update this game quite a bit. I think this company who actually had this game, I think they've been bought over or they've actually made a proper company now out of it and they're going to go ahead and maybe make more games. I'm unsure, but basically the loading screen changed a bit. And I've seen a new icon, so I've not read into it, mind you, but I'm assuming that something has changed in the actual structure. And the thing is, if they've built a good game engine out of this, they could use this to make lots and lots and lots of different games. Again, this follows the very similar principle of, you know, Prison Architect, Sim Airport. All these games, if they were actually just game engines, then they could really go ahead and be made to just make very similar games using the same sort of thing. There's also, I guess, oh, this is actually perfect for the amount of items we have here. Soap and shampoos. And then that is us pretty much done, which is great. So, they can make so many games using this these sort of tools, you know. And I think that if a game engine like this comes out, then it would just make life super, super amazing. There could be so much more. There's another game I want to play like this called School Academia. That is going to get played at some point as well, so I think when that happens that will be quite easy to pick up. I'm thinking that'll come out over Christmas time though, because I really do want to play it, but again I've got a few other games such as City Skylines coming up, which you might already, might already be on my channel actually, but again we'll discuss that at a later stage. So Beauty Palace, this place is going to be 24-7 because why not? Let's get some stock clerks in here and let's get the stock onto the shelves. I think two stock clerks at all times in this place will be adequate. So let's get... Oh, I hired a cashier there by accident. Oops. Right, let's go ahead and jump into shift planning. Let's filter by stock clerks and let's go ahead and get... That schedule sorted out like so, which is perfect. And then finally, we just need some more cashiers. So two cashiers on at all times. I think, yes, that makes sense. And then we can go ahead and... Yeah, let this place go and see how it does, to be honest. So if we jump to staff, shift planning, cashiers. Cashier number four, please. Uh, which is perfect. And then we can go ahead and... Let that go. So let's speed this up and actually see the shop get into a bit of action. Which would be good. Stock clerks really need to put stock on the shelves. Guess they've not just turned up for work yet. Or have I done something wrong? I don't think I have done something wrong, which is strange. Though nothing is happening, which is strange. Right, so a cashier's turned up and a stock clerk's turned up and now we're cooking, which is good. Right, okay, so good luck to this place. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we are pretty much amazingly done this series. We filled up the mall long last. Not bad at all. So let's go over some stuff. 
And I do want to spend a tiny bit of time though on the bar and the restaurant though first of all before we do wrap this series up and just review things. It's going to be a bit of a longer episode but again if you feel it's too long go ahead and just pause the video, add it to your watch list and come back and watch the rest of it at a later stage. Okay, I've also realised that this is way too large here, way too large which is crazy but it is by the by. Okay, so fancy restaurant time. Let's go ahead and just add in some more. I want to change the layout of this place in all honesty. I'm not happy with it in the slightest. So let me go ahead and remove all of this here. We are going to add in other doors into this place. Just so we can go ahead and... I don't know, make it a bit popular. Make it a bit more better. Because in all honesty, it needs a bit of a boost, I think. So let me go ahead and... Maybe remove that door. Maybe that door is a bit much. Let me go ahead and sort out floating but before I forget, of course. I really do like this floating actually, but I feel it only suits these modern places. And then also what we're going to do for the first time ever is we're going to have a door between the bar and a natural door which customers can use between the two places. Again, I'm just wanting to try and promote, you know, you go for a nice meal, then you go through to the bar. That's the sort of thing I'm trying to work towards. So let's go ahead and wall that up there. Now let me go ahead and have a little think here. Let's get some more restaurant tables in here first of all. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and let's do thirteen and fourteen along the top here, which is fine. Then we're just gonna fill up the rest of this place because it looks really weird being as empty as it is. So that's why I want to get some more in here. For the time being. Now we can also have some more tables up here as well and then I think that runs into you know what we're actually going to go ahead and build even more and we're going to get rid of one of these checkouts because we don't need as many checkouts as we have right now in all honesty. So let's go ahead and do that which is perfect. Okay so that's a bit more full. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to check out and see how it's doing. So this is called restaurant 25 which should be here perfect so as we can see right now we are making money which is good however i feel we can make a bit more money so what we're going to do is we're really going to go ahead and push the boundaries again we're going to open this place up for a lot of a, a longer period if you will so we're going to open it up for 18 hours a day which is some quite change i guess you could say let's go ahead and now sort out the shift planning so cashier wise uh, if we're starting at 9am, we're going to need to change this up a bit, and then if we're opening up till 3am in the morning as well, then yeah, we really are going to need some change. So that works out quite well, I think, with the cashiers. So again, we build up to the most staff at the busiest periods, which is good. Stock clerk-wise, we're going to need someone in from 9am, and we're going to need someone in... We're going to have to extend your guys' shifts, actually. We're going to do nine-hour shifts for this stock clerks here, which is fine. So that works out perfectly. Janitors. We don't need janitors here. We do need waiters, though, which we've got a lot of waiters. So we're going to need to start some of you guys at nine o'clock now. Some of you can come in from, what, 12? And then the rest of the team sort of piles in from other times throughout the day. So you guys all run till 2. We'll start to run some of you guys till 3 a.m. instead. Which is perfect. Uh, um, it's on auto right now. You guys aren't that happy, which is a bit unfortunate. What else we need? We need cooks as well. So cooks, we start you at 9 a.m. Start two of you at 9 a.m. Start you two at 3 in the afternoon. And then the rest of you will run right through the night until 3 a.m which is perfect right so that's that change made so hopefully it'll start to make some difference anyway a lot more seating there seems to be a lot of waiters standing around right now which is good so the cooks are doing what they can uh stock clerking is doing fine maybe we need another stock clerk to be honest now i think we're doing okay i think we maybe need more cooks honestly i think that's what we need more of I'm just having a look. In general, it seems to be one cook seems to cook for one table. It's not like fast food, for example, where everything goes into a dispenser. So we've got a lot of orders right now. So I think that's what we're going to do, honestly. We're going to go ahead and jump into here. We're going to get rid of this here, all these tables. 
and we are just going to add in more cooking areas because again the cooking things are quite different so that's a fast food cooking range then we have a fine dining cooking range so let's get one let's get two let's get three let's get four more in here jump into manage hire cooks and let's get a lot more cooks hired and let's hopefully go ahead and make a difference also give the waiters a bit more to do so that's me hired like i don't know quite a lot more cooks anyway so let's jump in here and see where we're at so you are not all going to start at 9 a.m that is for sure how many cooking ranges do we have now four out four we have eight yeah we have eight so we need more people on a later shift that's what we really need so we push seven of you to the later shift and then if we yeah do something like that then that works out quite nicely i quite like the look of that in all honesty it does drop down though here to three I don't know how it does, but it does. But anyway, that works out hopefully fine. Again, what we can do is some of the people who don't work right through till 3 a.m., we can move use back like that and extend use to 2 a.m. Like so, which is perfect. Right, okay, so let's go ahead and hopefully see a difference there. Metal Bar, how are you doing? You're doing really well. I can't really feel like, I can't really change you too much, to be honest. Uh, I think we're meeting sales, which is good. I don't think there's too much frustration level. We could extend your opening time, but again, our bar opening at, you know, before 11 a.m. seems weird. And it is very quiet at this time of day, as you can tell. Not many people coming for drinks. The evenings, obviously, is going to pick up. I mean, it's starting to pick up now in the afternoon, just after lunch. So, a lunchtime drink, I can see that. It's being relatively popular. Okay, now there's all of a sudden a lot of people queuing. Which is good to note. So what we could do with some more cashiers definitely. Let's go ahead and grab a few more cashiers and hopefully see their work come in here. Let's jump into shift planning and cashiers. Most cashiers coming at 11 a.m. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and add in some more for the evening. So that's four and four now at all times, which is good. So that should hopefully make some difference. Though again. Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. That's perfect, which is good. And then waiters wise, we probably could do with some more waiters. The stock clerks are really busy, which is good. Waiters. Yeah, let's bring in a few more waiters just to go ahead and help the tide, I guess you could say. Uh, also, dum dum dum, more missing floors. Let me sort that out. And that's perfect. Right. Okay. So that's looking good. Really, really good. The extra waiters, let's go ahead and just sort out their shift planning. Filter by waiters. Again, there's nowhere near enough waiters in the evening time. So that should hopefully make some difference now. Again, do you go up and order your own drink and then sit down and wait for it to be brought to you? Yeah, you do. Yeah, so we need a lot more waiters. Waiters are a lot more important than I've realised. Because, I mean, for example, in a pub like Weatherspoons, you literally go up, you get your order. And you get your pint there at the same time, so there's not really much need for waiters. So, it kind of makes sense. Right, anyway, we'll put you on from... Yeah, perfect. That'll do. We'll just move a few of these waiters to different times throughout the day. Which is cool. Right, okay, so that's good. So that's that metal bar sorted. And the restaurant, how have your sales improved? That is the real question. Uh, difficult to say right now. But yes, net profit has gone through the roof. But I think it's because we're just cooking a lot more, which is good. So we've got a lot more cooks working. And it means we can get a lot, get through just a lot more tables at once, really. Uh, right now, we seem to have near enough all our waiters in action, which is super useful. And I think we're serving people really quickly here. And again, it seems to be like $130, $199. It costs a lot of money per person for food. So it is quite important that we do make the most of this. Because this is like uh, the jewellery shop, you know. It's one function, but it makes a lot of money. Whereas we shouldn't spend as much time on the news agents Because it doesn't make us a lot of money, to be honest. In all honesty. Anyway, coming out of that, let's go ahead and... Wrap the series up, to be honest. So, I'm going to go ahead and put items on these shelves quickly here. Is this the news agents? Yeah, it is the news agents, isn't it? What seems to be coming off the shelves really quickly? Toys. Yeah. What else? 
tell you what, what is all this? Is this all books? We're going to move the books out the way there because we're going to go ahead and change it up for... Where is books? Media and toys. Yeah, books. Right, okay, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to add some more self-service checkouts in. So that's why I'm going to move the books down to this bottom corner. Oh, this menu system. Not going to miss this menu system as I've already ranted about today, but holy shit. Right, let's also get some toys in here as well. Which is perfect. Let me go ahead and remove that. And let's go ahead and get in two more self-service things in here for the time being. So let's get one there and then one there, which is perfect. So that should hopefully make a small difference, especially when the store is unmanned. And perfect, voila. So that's us done, pretty much. I can go ahead and make a few improvements here and there, don't get me wrong, and I will as we go around here. We're going to go ahead and add in a few more loading zones just randomly here, though I realise we're not really too close to any storage areas, but it's important to have anyway. I'm also seeing a small issue of... reason I'm being so pernickety here at the end here is this map will be available on the Steam Workshop, which is quite exciting. So uh, if the link is not in the description below, please remind me. It will be there very, very shortly. And I will go ahead and you can download this, play this. If you do go ahead and play this, actually tell me what you do. So I've got a Discord and I've also got a Twitter, so tweet at me. I want to see how people extend this place. I want to see what they do to it. I want to see if they go ahead and add in a second massive building. I'm really quite curious indeed. Okay, so let's go over everything now. We started off here at Bigfoot Superstore, and I was going to demolish this. I'm kind of glad I did save it now, to be honest. But it's worked out okay in the end. It was a bit touch and go for a while, in all honesty. But I'm glad we got to where we got to with it. It is a bit overcrowded still, as we can evidently tell. Uh, but it's, it's, it's done its job anyway. It really has done its job. And we can make it a little bit better, even in this these final closing stages. We can go ahead and add in some more self-service checkouts here as well, which is perfect too. So that's good. So that's good to see. And with regards to profit margins, we're just going to go through this whole list, to be honest. So let's start off Bigfoot Superstore. Its net profit is so much lower than it once was because it now really... The other Superstore, the Superstore XL, takes the majority of its share, but it still does a good job. And of course it does well because it's sort of connected up to this road here. But it did us well and I'm really happy with how it came out. Northwestern Fried Chicken, again, its profit margins have been drastically cut since it's been... Since we've built another fried chicken place. However, as we can see here, we are... We changed the layout a bit as well to add in more checkouts because that's what we definitely needed. The salaries are quite high here, but the net profit is still doing pretty good and I'm really happy with how this place turned out after we went ahead and altered up DIY Heaven. Jumping down to DIY Heaven then, I guess you can say it has done relatively well. It is white goods, so it's not something you buy every single day. However, I'm quite happy with the profit rate it's like worked at and I'm I, I can't really complain you know it makes us eleven thousand dollars all in all which is great jumping down over to the office mall that's not really relevant but it was used and that's where a lot of our research came from we've now researched everything so we can't really take that too much further moving on to the I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. Electronic City, something that we recently upgraded, which is good. And as we can see, we're making much better use out of it. We're going ahead and seeing a relatively successful place. I could add more checkouts, and that's why I've left this area blank. But there's not honestly much need right now. In the corner of my... I just seen that there. Which needs to be sorted. And tell you what, we're going to upgrade the floors in here and here as well, actually. But that's by the by. Profit margin, 86% with a amazing net profit of 23000 With the electronics, though, it was kind of to be expected because, again, you don't buy them too regularly, but they are expensive. Okay, so now moving down to Billy's Butchers. This is a change which was recently made, and as we can see, it's doing well. It's in the profit. That's all I can really say about it, to be honest. 
Obviously, there's quite a sharp drop in the graph, but that was when it was also part of the fishmongers. But we should be meeting the demands, which we'll check out in a second. Then we've got all of these movie theatres, which come from this ticket office here. We've gone ahead and extended the ticket office operations, adding in much more staff. And the four cinemas do well, making us just about $5,000 overall, which is great. So, really happy. And it's getting a lot of use. We're meeting the demands. What more can you really ask for? Simon's Liquor Store. This one's an interesting one because coming back to it for such a long time, it was in the negative. With this crazy amount of people we've now got coming here, it's doing not as bad as it once was, however. But, as we can see, it's still not really profitable, it's hit and miss. It's quite surprising, because the amount of people that buy liquor, but there's no, like, fancy liquors. If we zoom in here... Where's my mouse going? There it is. Right, as we can see here, the liquor's only worth, like, $1, $2, $3. It's not worth, like, a bottle of spirits would be, like, you know, $15, but you're not seeing a lot of that. You do see, occasionally, the double figures, which may be a bottle of whiskey or something, but... It's really not a lot. It's very, very cheap stuff here. So that's why it's not doing as well. And then it's just difficult. It's difficult. It's never done well from the offset, but it's a really high thing in demand. So it kind of does make sense. Pins Bowling Alley. This is something which we've done a lot of work to as the series has gone on. We've really, really extended it quite a lot recently, actually. Uh, but it's doing really well. Maintenance is relatively high just because of the amount of bowling alleys, but... In general, it's making us, you know, $2,000, really can't complain, and it's ticking a big entertainment box for us, which is good. Coming down to the bar, we just did spend some time on this place, and all in all, it's doing not too bad. It looks like it's actually just had its worst day. It was at about a profit of 4000 Obviously, there's been a salary increase, which has made a little bit of an effect, but it has dropped quite a bit there, which is disappointing. I'd be hoping to see a bit more of an upwards trend with those changes, not a downwards trend, but maybe yesterday was just a bad day. Restaurant 25, we've really gone ahead and just taken it to the next level there, which I'm super happy with. We've gone ahead and ticked that box, and it is really doing really well now with those changes. It looks like it's pretty much doubled in its profit margin, which is great, and we're also starting to see now... A lot more people use it as well. It used to be a lot of empty tables, but that makes sense because it didn't have enough cooks in the place. Garden World. Garden World's an interesting one, actually. I really enjoy building this place, and it's probably one of my most nice to look at because it's a nice combination of the green with the tables and also all the flowers, the dark floor, and then the, the very clean and basic shelves, I feel. It's one of my favorite stores to look at, in all honesty, from above. Layout's quite good as well, really, really nice, and it makes us a wee bit of money. It ticks a box again, it's not losing money, and it's providing a service, which is great. Diamond Gems, this is an interesting one. It's our jewellery store, which is our specific jewellery store here. And all in all, I am not the biggest fan of the store itself, actually. It makes us lots of money, so on that hand, I can't complain. But I'm not the biggest fan of it in the sense of... It needs a security route. It also can only be open certain hours. I mean, I can expand the opening hours. Don't get me wrong. However, it's just a bit of a it's a bit of a strange one. This place. So, not the biggest fan of it, but it does a lot of good for me, and it makes me a lot of money. Coming down now to the news agents. This here is really just a ticker box. It looks like it's had one of its best days recently, though, which is nice to see. Quite happy about that. It is just ticking a box. Not too bad. It's not uh, anything special, I guess you could say, but. It's doing its job and it's tidying over, making us just over a thousand a day. Steam coffee, I was, I did hint at the, in, I think it was two episodes ago maybe, that I wanted to make a big change to the steam coffee and I was really just going to go ahead and expand it and build lots of little ones like Starbucks does for example. I could definitely do with some more staff, there we go, extra staff have come along. Um, but, all in all, things are doing really well here and I think we could go ahead and take them to the next level if we had time but unfortunately we do not with this series though again if you want to see more of it please leave comments below. Betty's bread. Betty's bread has always been no go. It's not really worked out too well but it's bread. Bread costs one dollar, two dollars, one dollar, two dollars so it doesn't really cost too much so that's probably why it's not making much of a profit plus the whole shop to run costs you know quite a bit. Not making as big as loss as we once were, though, which is super good to see, so I'm glad that's changed, but 
It, it ticks a box again, but it's never been that great in all honesty. But I don't think I can really do too much more with it. Smoky Joe. Smoky Joe, on the other hand, has done quite well. Not much to say on this place, to be honest. It sells cigarettes and uh, e-cigarettes and whatever other stuff, tobacco. So it's done relatively well. It doesn't get too much of a boost or it doesn't... It sort of stays steady, I guess you could say. But it's making us a profit, so I really can't complain. Pages. Pages is interesting. Pages doesn't do too well in terms of day-to-day. -day. It's under a £1,000 in sales, but every year there's a new book release and the current events, and it is super, super amazing when that comes around because you get a massive spike, which I'm guessing the book release day was very recently, hence the massive spike. It does okay this place, but can't really complain. It's making enough money to be profitable. Game Nation. Got to be one of my favourite actual physical stores when I actually go out to a mall and go to a game. They are really, really enjoyable. Game Nation here has done well on money. It looks like there must have been a big game release as well, or was it Christmas recently? I'm not at all sure, to be honest. It must have been. It could have been. There's a delivery strike coming up. That scares the shit out of me. But as we can see, it's done really well. It can consistently is making about seven to 8,000, and then every so often it has a spike going into five figures, which is great. So really glad I built it and it's a good money contributor. Southwestern Fried Chicken, can't say too much on it to be honest. It's a chicken place, it is fast food. We are quite fast at delivering the food. We've got lots of people using this place. It definitely took away from the Northeastern Fried Chicken and all in all, it does well, it provides fast food and we've met the demand of fast food, we've overcompensated for it, which I'm really glad about, but this place is doing good and I'm quite happy with it. And again, there is room to go ahead and expand a bit more as well, which is super useful. Interestingly, there's not a lot of burgers being made. We're a bit behind actually, we could do with another cook in here to be honest, to just go ahead and catch things up. We've got four in right now, so the dispensers, like all these ones are empty over here, so interesting to note. but. Can't complain, to be honest. We're doing well there. Coming up to Bigfoot Superstore. Now, this is an interesting one. Profit-wise, it's really not doing that great. It's really dropped from what it once was, quite disappointingly, in all honesty. And I can't really put my finger on it. I think this place was doing so well because there wasn't a... It does primarily sales on food and then a bit of everything else so everything else doesn't really sell too well here because there's specific stores but i think it was doing so well before we added in the cosmetic pharmacy sort of store down here just because this was the only other place that sold all of those items but now we have a separate shop for that as you can see it's doing extremely well but i think it's also taken out from the market share from bigfoot superstore xl i'm glad we built it though and it has really gone ahead and met a lot of the demanding needs which we sort of had and it really has brought a lot more people to the mall in general. Then finally, or no, we got a few more, Rural Outfitters XL. So this place has done quite well since it's really, I guess, been moved in the, was it last episode or two episodes ago? From over here where Electronic City is, it's done quite well. The sales-wise, it ticks all the boxes. It gives people enough clothes, and it's um, it made forty-six thousand. A clothes shop making forty-six thousand in one day is crazy. Sits in around the twenty thousands and does perfect. That brings us on to Rural Outfitters shoes. Again, this place is doing super well. Shoes just seem to be crazy in demand, especially women's shoes. So we've gone ahead and we built a specific store for that and it's done extremely well in the sales and I just cannot get enough of it. 12,000 on shoes alone on one single item, which again, shoes are... Okay, they're actually quite pricey shoes. No wonder it's making such a profit and I'm very happy with that. Billy's Fishmonger, not much to say. Again, it's sort of like the meat place. It's doing hit and miss. You know, it makes a profit. It ticks a box, so I can't complain. Finally, Beauty Palace. Beauty Palace is an interesting one because it is gone ahead and taken away from the XL, but it's doing really well in profitability, and we're about to check the demand stats now, so we'll go ahead and see how things are doing. Now, clearing this backlog out here, I've got a yellow bubble, which... I've never had a yellow one before. And if I hover over it, it doesn't do anything. Is that a warning? I'm really not sure what that is. 
Was it a eureka moment? Is a, I have no idea. If anyone knows, leave a comment down in the comment section below. That would be greatly appreciated. But we've gone over everything now. With regard to peak customers on site, it seems to be in the low 3000s. That's where we seem to sit right now, in all honesty. And with regards to parking usage as well, it's about 1,300. I could build more, but I think we're good there. Sales-wise, 14 to 15,000. That's where we seem to sit, which is good. And I'm really, really glad about it. Doing well all around. Daily profit margin, net profit, it is hit or miss. It is probably in between about 150 to 200,000. That's the honest, I guess, close range. In general, it seems to have got a bit lower, which is disappointing. It used to be sitting a lot closer to the 189,000 mark, and now it's down a bit. So we have dropped a little bit, but that's unfortunate. And in general, cash is doing great. Overall sales, I think we're to make either 5 million or 5... 5 million or 50 million sales. We're working towards that slowly but surely, but that'll just take time. Stats here, as we can see, this is parking usage. We've got everything in a bit more, uh, I guess, what would you call it, detail here. Uh, the one I just want to check is net profit. So you can really tell basically when we added in the extra road and when we've done a lot of upgrades. So crazy, crazy little work and progress is made. And then all of a sudden in this latest stage, it's done extremely well, which is good. So really glad about that. Finance, we've touched on. Research, we've done everything, I believe, which is perfect. Demand, this is the interesting one. So if we go to all here, fast food, we're overcompensating for. Fresh meat, we're doing good with now. Everything else, I've tried to go ahead and accommodate and I think we've done a relatively good job. I just want to highlight the entertainment side of things. Done really, really well there. And I cannot complain at all. And marketing. We've had some marketing campaigns going on just to promote them all. And with that said, that's pretty much it. That's me gone through pretty much all the stats I wanted to go through. In general, things are... I mean, things can always be made better. But I feel we've got to a stage where we're sort of just repeating the, the cycle now. And we're not really getting too much new stuff done. So that's pretty much it for the series, ladies and gentlemen. Again, if you want me to do another another Brick in the Mall series at a later stage, like in a year's time, I'd be happy to. Unless I can only see myself doing one if there's really high demand and or significant updates come out. So that'll be important to note. Go ahead and suggest some more games that you'd like to see me play. I've got a few in the pipeline right now, which is exciting. But then after that, we'll go ahead and... I guess move on to games that you want me to play. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say. With that said, go ahead and leave a like rating. The playlist is going to be showing at the end of this video in the end card. So if you missed any episodes or want to go back to the start and watch them all again and give them a like rating, then that would be wonderful. Leave a like rating on this episode. It's been a long episode, but it has been a great series. And again, I just I'm always interested in people leaving like ratings. I measure my videos not by views, but by like ratings. That's positive interactions for me, which I want as many of those as I possibly can get. Go ahead and check out my Twitter, my Patreon and my Discord. All the links are in the description below. And that's all, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much for watching this series. My name is Bigfoot and I'm out.